just uh, unroll my manuscript. Hi everyone, um, I'm Felipe, I'm manager of digital collections here at Papa and uh, NDF board member. Um, and sorry to interrupt the smooth um, MCing that Dave's providing today, um, but we have to make a, yeah, a slight detour just to acknowledge um, two of our, our community, two um, long-standing board members that are, that are stepping down um, this year. Um, so I'd like to, to acknowledge on behalf of the NDF board um, the amount of time and commitment that um, Andy Neal and Matthew Oliver have put into the organisation over the last five years. They've both been board members for four or five years. Um, Andy was the chair of the board for two of those years and conference convener for three. And Matthew has been the, um, the chair for... Oh, let's turn it round. It's the other way around, isn't it? Anyway, they've both been, both been chair and conference convener in alternate years for the last five years. Um, it's a huge commitment. Um, all the NDF board are volunteers, and a lot of that work, of course, was supported by our organisations to be part of that, but a lot of that work takes place out of ours as well. Um, so it's, it's a huge effort. Um, if I reflect on the last few years that, 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 these, um, that Matthew and Andy have, have led the organisation, I think they've really tried to take on the challenge of moving NDF from being a, a community that meets once a year for, for conference to a community that meets on and much more regularly throughout the year um, through the membership base that we've tried to build, the membership model that, that's been developed, and the regional four of it now take place around the regions and around the country. Um, there's a lot more work to do, but I think they really they took on that challenge, and um, NDF is, is hugely um, strong, strong for it. Um, so I'd like to just um, invite Matthew and Andy to the stage just to receive a, a token of our appreciation on behalf of the board and on behalf of the whole um, NDF community. It's not a brown envelope. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for giving us that um, Matthew's booked himself in for 15 minutes to say farewell, but um, I wonder if we could invite um, Andy just to say, say a couple of words um, before we pass over for Matthew for the closing address. You don't have to. But. I think, I think I said that I wasn't planning to come back up on stage any time again soon. Um, no, I just want to say thank you to all of you. Um, and uh, it has been a real privilege to be um, working with the NDF board over the last five years. And I've personally gotten a, a lot from it. And all I'd say is I'd, I'd recommend um, at some point getting more involved in the organisation um, it's a really worthwhile thing to be doing and um, love having you here, love these events uh, and um, yeah, you'll still see me around. So thank you. You all finished, Dave? <laughs> Any other surprises? Thank you very much. I totally echo Andy's comments um, and thank you very much for, for this honour. Um, thank you, Julia, for your wonderful closing talk. Uh, really wonderful talk about how we can use innovation to, to work with creative communities and just accept that uh, the value that creativity brings um, to our society. Uh, yeah, we've got some awards. Um, I also know that I'm the last thing between you and a drink or a plane, um, but I do want to say, some, say a few words. Um, first up, thank you all for being here for in what has been such a trying time for so many of you um, who probably a lot of nervousness about coming to Wellington. Um, I think it's a total testament to the, the quality of the, the, the quality of the conference, the commitment of the organisers, speakers, and all of you who are here together. I think your presence and the point of so much of what we've heard over the last, days, last few days just points to what's important, and that's people. Um, you know, it's both the people here and it's the people that we serve. Uh, so I have been involved with NDF for five years. I'm the outgoing chair. Um, I've done some, you know, I've met some wonderful people in this community um, and had the chance to do the sort of work that I never would have thought about. Um, I, I remember being up here about five years ago, or four years ago, whatever it was, um, giving a talk to 300 people. That's the sort of thing I've tried to avoid for most of my life. Um, so I got over some stuff on that. Um, right now I don't want to speak as the, um, the outgoing chair or as a particular you know, staff member of a particular organisation. Um, simply as a person who's got the privilege to be up here talking to you all. Um, particularly at the end of what's been a fairly weird year. Um, I guess 
Oh, that's really weird. <laughs> we all remember this guy? Probably this guy as well. Sad events for many, uh, who I think you know, saw in them sort of creative genius that really spoke to the great variety of humankind. But we can only read so much into celebrity deaths, and as Matariki reminded us yesterday, things have changed this year. You know, it's the likes of Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson, and most recently Donald Trump, who have unleashed um, what I think is a bit of an assault, well, it is an assault on human decency, you know, the likes of which we haven't seen in years. I guess we can argue about the future of parliamentary democracy or the validity of neoliberalism, breakdown of progressive politics even. But I think what we can all see is a fractured, and, a fractured world of increasing inequality and division. And we watch it from afar and think we're not that affected, but we are. We have, after all, people sleeping in cars in our country. And we have you know, reports recently of increased racial abuse in New Zealand, you know, emboldened by events overseas. Just last week, Brian Tomaki, clearly trying to deflect a bit of blame from the Destiny Church, if, if you just listen to Richard Foy, um, he thought it was okay to blame natural disaster on sexual, sexual orientation, among other things. You know, it, it really is the sort of abuse I'd hoped we were putting behind us as a society. But we are part of a global community, and we share many of the good and the bad with other countries. This is the BAE share price reacting to Trump's election. That's the big spike. Um, you know, what does this say about potential for conflict in our world? You know, right now it's anyone's guess, who knows what Trump's going to do. Um, but you know, it's a bit of a worry when the world's most powerful leader-elect inspires that sort of confidence in the weapons industry. Uh, voter turnout in the US, I'm sure these figures have changed since this was posted. Um, but you know, over 100 million Americans didn't vote. Similar in New Zealand. Uh, Think about, what was it, 20, over 20% 20 didn't vote? That's 700,000 people. You know, that's big disengagement in our country. I'm not saying parliamentary democracy is the answer. Politics, maybe they're broken. Maybe we look at things like you know, what Figure NZ are doing as different ways of you know, build, rebuilding engagement. But what do we do? What do we as a sector do? You know, we're not about to solve homelessness or, or voter, you know, change voter patterns. But I think we can help and create a society that people want to belong to and we can reach out as a, as a society and invite people back in. I think we need to look at our organisations and really ask, what is the work that connects us most strongly with all New Zealanders? I'm going to get some water. Sorry. Some, I think it's somebody else's. <laughs> I've got yours as well here, Julia. Thank you. You know, are our education and community, community programs as good as they can be? What can we learn from the likes of, of Julia on that, that sort of work? And are we reaching the disadvantaged and the vulnerable and the forgotten? I think it was great to hear Robin Hunt yesterday remind us that we're here for all people and we've got to make all our content available in that way. Are we providing spaces for people to tell their stories and valuing the contribution they make? I mean, I look to our regional organisations and the work they're doing out in the communities, and that's incredibly valuable. I think as a sector, we need to work out how to support them properly to do that, and then find ways that our national institutions can actually work through them as well and reach out. I think we need to see our role as central to working with communities and with people and doing all we can to halt, halt and repair the sort of social breakdown we're seeing. And it's not all doom and gloom. I, I shouldn't be up here giving a doom and gloom, because it isn't that. You know, I think we're really well positioned to, to face that challenge. You know, I look at our Treaty of Waitangi. It hasn't been honoured properly in the past, but the reparations are heading in the right direction. Ultimately, it signals a commitment to partnership that we all need to honour. And it's in our interests to learn from each other. Um, and, you, know, you look at Ngati Fatua's response in Auckland to homelessness, and last week, you know, Ngātahu's response to the quakes. It's getting in there, it's helping, helping communities, being known in communities as places that will help. And I think to honour that partnership, Takare Norton's talk this morning, making our collections open, usable, contributable back into those communities, it's the first step along that partnership, I think. I think, too, the recent interest in New Zealand wars, stop editing... Google Docs. Um, recent interest in New Zealand wars, it shows a real thirst to explore and understand and recognise and acknowledge what Māori suffered during the New Zealand wars and during the colonial period, and how, as a country, we can think about it and move on from it. 
2018, sorry, I'm getting into commemoration space now, but 2018, 175th anniversary of suffrage, women's suffrage, I should say. Sure, it's a chance to celebrate you know, democracy and talk about voting and try to get people more interested in that. But it's also a chance to talk about income inequality, domestic violence, systemic sexism, and what we as a society want to do about those issues. These are the sorts of real conversations that our sector needs to be in. We need to be involved in them. You know, we need to think about the contribution we make to those conversations and how we nurture them. We've talked a bit about value and culture. That's important. These things aren't... Sorry, that's all off the topic, actually. Um, <laughs> It's not about making ourselves relevant or appear relevant. I think we need to kind of get past arguing, arguing that we are relevant. We've been forced into this defensive situation of, of trying to prove that we're relevant. We just need to get out there and be relevant. You know, we need to be relevant to building social co cohesion. And a real shout out to uh, Mark Crookston for talking about this and Treasury's living standards framework of all things yesterday. Represent. But you know, I do think it's a real tribute to New Zealand that our public servants, even in Treasury, actually think about social cohesion as something that's important. Similarly, Lillian Grace talked this morning, but she hasn't met a, met a person yet who doesn't think about our future. I think that's a really positive thing that we can build on. Ah, so our sector, it has a role here, and it's, in, it's about building a society where people want to look after each other and where hate can't survive. One thing's for sure, it's about building and celebrating community, and with that, we will get on to awards. Ashley, were you going to come and help me? You did offer. I don't know what you're going to do, but I can probably do it. That's all right. I'll do whatever you want me. I was going to make a hashtag out of this. We stand up. I think we should be standing up. You guys don't have to stand up. People are winning awards. We'll have to stand up in just a minute. So yes, second annual NDF Awards. Uh, we did it last year, and it was, you know, we gave each everybody a bottle of wine, it was okay. This year we've moved on to certificates and a bottle of wine. Um, <laughs> we will give out certificates to the people from last year once we get them printed. <laughs> so things are going up. Um, I'm just gonna jump straight into it. Um, we have four awards that were nominated by you all, um, and Judges made a decision on the winners for those, and then two that you've been voting on, as you know, for the last few hours, the last hour and a half, and I have those in my pocket. So, without further ado, the first award goes to Auckland War Memorial Museum for the Open Sesame Award. Anybody want to come up and get their award? <laughs> Do I have to post this out as well? Somebody, if you can't read, it's for undertaking an imaging and cataloging project that will result in an open access program that I think all New Zealanders can celebrate. I think it's really important that we are building these big projects across the country, so let's work out how we can share them. Please, come up. Um, thank you very much, NDF, and I just want to acknowledge my colleagues who actually do all the hard work, so this is for you. I'm just here collecting it for you. Well done, everyone. Thank you. Great conference. Have a glass of bottle of wine. Oh, wow. <laughs> and next up, reminding myself, I'm going to look at that screen, it's the Community Builder Award, and it goes to Dunedin Public Libraries for their work with the Cedar Lebanese community. Is there anyone here from Dunedin? Here we go. Lorraine, come up. The mic is yours if you, if you want it. Um, well, the person sitting next to me will affirm the fact that my reaction was, oh my God. And <laughs> I don't think I'm going to say any more because I might cry, but thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, the Great Collaborator Award. I think you might guess who this one is. It's going to Tusk Culture.
Hari Hari. And the next award is for the Sharing is Caring Award, and it goes to someone who has been sharing her knowledge about copyright forever and doing a huge job, Victoria Leachman. I just want to say I've been sitting up the back thinking, oh, look, that's a cool person that got pri that prize. It's a cool person that got that prize. They deserve it. And I said, I'm not going to get a prize. But I just want to say I was thinking of every single one of you that's contributed to this whole um, NDF and also our sector. And I just want to say this, guy, this one's for you guys. These ones are the surprising ones. The Big Thought Award. Right, so which was the most challenging talk that stopped you and made you think differently, presented a big idea and changed your thinking? Actually, I could just put that up there, couldn't I? Um, and it goes to Adam Moriarty, Auckland War Memorial Museum. Right, our final award, the Big Takeaway Award, which talk has inspired you to try or something different. New, which, which will inspire you to try or something? Try, well, what am I saying? Try something different in your practical work. I'll put it on the screen, you can all read along. When you go back to your desk. Matariki Williams and Nina Finnegan, Tusk Culture, getting it done. If I'd known, I would have said you could say up. <laughs> Do you want to say something this time? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, during, <laughs> during our um, presentation, we did mention that Tusk was never about just us two. It was always about our community. So really, this is for all of you guys. Yeah. Not us. I have one bottle of wine between you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. Right, that's it for awards. Um, congratulations to all the award winners. Um, it's fantastic to celebrate you all. A um, couple of people have asked when's the next conference, um, including to Papa, who are getting booked up. So we have penciled in the same week this time next year. So that's 20 and 26, 20, 20 and 21 November. Um, so that's penciled in. That'll be for the board to decide. Um, but put that in your diaries, and we'll see you back here. Uh, can't finish without many, many thanks. Uh, thanks to our hosts, to Papa Ngati Toa and to Ati Awa. Thank you very much for the warm welcome we received yesterday. Uh, I want to thank all the board members, all the volunteers, all the members who support us. Uh, Diane Weatherhead, our executive support, who keeps us all very honest, um, does far more than she gets paid to do, I'm sure. Uh, we greatly value that. Regional reps have done so much to get our, our work out across the country. You do a huge job, and we really appreciate you volunteering on that. Finally, to the conference, the whole team who pulled this together, led so well by Andy. You deserve all the accolades you've received today, Andy. Oh, okay, I'll stop, Brett. <laughs> 
Um, but all of you, all the people who've contributed, volunteered to run this conference have been wonderful. Uh, Dave's talked about our sponsors and trade partners. We wouldn't be here without you. Most importantly, all the speakers, new and old, near and far, you've given us so much to think about. And of course, you, the audience, for being so open and enthusiastic for new ideas. If I've left anyone out, I'm really sorry, but I'll buy you a drink at Max Brew Bar if you'd like. It's just 200 meters that way, I think. Um, so please do come and have a drink if you don't have to get away anywhere. Uh, see you there, or see you next year. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you.